The dissociative identity disorder community already has it hard enough. As many of you saw, if you watched Anthony Padilla's video with people like Dissocia DID, but Trisha Paytas doesn't really care about that. And right now she has offended yet another entire community. But here's the thing, if more people understood borderline personality disorder, what Trisha Paytas does would make a lot more sense. What's up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. I've been trying to put more commentary stuff on the second channel but I felt like this deserved a main channel appearance. But anyways, if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, we're gonna be talking about Trisha Paytas's brand new video, Meet My Alters, Dissociative Identity Disorder. Many of you have seen these types of videos like Switch Caught on Camera, um, the channel Dissocia uh, DID has a ton of subscribers and things like that. But anyways, like this, I feel, I feel like I finally, I finally come to understand what the entire LGBTQ community was so upset about. Like, I knew what she did was very offensive to some when she came out as a trans man, uh, a gay man trapped in a woman's body who doesn't really feel like a man and all that stuff. But yet again, like, and we're going to discuss it in a second. If you understand borderline personality disorder, it makes sense. But anyways, although I do not have dissociative identity disorder, I am somebody in the mental health community right? And this is offensive. This, I, I can imagine, and I've already seen some of the backlash in the comments. People from the DID community are highly offended by this. But aside from that, borderline personality disorder has a massive stigma around it, a massive stigma around it. And Trisha Paytas being such a public figure, she is making that community look bad as well, all right? And how do we know? How do we know she has borderline personality disorder? Well, for those of you who haven't met me, no, I am not a licensed therapist. I am not a licensed psychologist. I am just somebody who is a nerd when it comes to mental health. I worked in a rehab for a few years. We did dual diagnosis, addiction, as well as mental health disorders, all right? And many people with borderline personality disorder have substance abuse disorders as well. So I have literally worked with thousands of people who have borderline personality disorder. And like, I wanna discuss this because First off, there's nothing wrong with having borderline personality disorder. It's a very difficult disorder. Part of the stigma around it is people with uh, BPD can sometimes be difficult to have a relationship with, whether it's uh, uh, an intimate relationship, like your significant other, or if they're a friend or a family member. Um, but also it's very hard on them because a lot of them are working hard to manage their borderline personality disorder, all right? But like I said, Trisha Paytas is a very public figure and this hurts that community. So before we dive into this, I'm gonna break down her video with a few clips. Like you need to understand borderline personality disorder if you want to understand why Trisha Paytas behaves the way she does. I am a huge believer that if you understand different forms of mental illness, it will help you empathize with those people, right? And while not giving them a pass or giving them an excuse for their behavior, it makes more sense why they do what they do. So real quick, I'm gonna run through the nine symptoms of borderline personality disorder. Both me and you cannot diagnose Trisha Paytas, but in this video that she made on World Mental Health Day, she clearly stated that she was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, which is much different than what she's doing right now, which is saying she's self-diagnosed as having DID. All right, number one, fear of abandonment. It is an intense, intense fear. This is often why it's very difficult for people with BPD to maintain relationships, all right? They are so afraid that somebody will leave them that sometimes it turns into a self-fulfilling prophecy where they push that other person away. All right, next one, unstable relationships, okay? Number three, unclear or shifting self-image. I want you to focus on this symptom, okay? One of the main symptoms of borderline personality disorder is this one. It is an unstable sense of self. Most people, most people 
they they know who they are, right? Our, our personality, our identity, it forms at a very young age. Most people who struggle with BPD experience trauma at a very young age and oftentimes had an you know emotional or verbally abusive relationship with one or both parents. Sometimes it was repeated trauma. That is why sometimes people are diagnosed with T CPTSD instead of BPD. But anyways, an unstable sense of self, all right? Impulsive, self-destructive behaviors. Another symptom, self-harm. Another one, extreme emotional swings. That's something to pay attention to. One of the trademark symptoms of borderline personality disorder is these massive shifts in moods, right? Rather than your mood going from like, you know, staying between like a one and a five, it is at like a 10, right? It's not just happy, it is just ecstatic. It's not just liking somebody, it's falling in love with somebody. It's not just getting a little bit upset, it is getting furious, okay? Next, chronic feelings of emptiness. This can also be associated with the lack of sense of self. Um, explosive anger. Uh, I will link this article down below. These are a little bit different than what the DSM says and also feeling suspicious or out of touch with reality. So I do wanna make it clear. It is very common for people with borderline personality disorder to dissociate, okay? But just because you dissociate doesn't mean dissociative identity disorder. That is completely different, okay? So now let's turn to some clips. Unfortunately for me, Trish, um, I never really formed my own personality. Um, so right there, that clip right there, that is not dissociative identity disorder. That is borderline personality disorder. I, I've watched a lot of videos of this recently. Most recently, obviously, Anthony Padilla did this and I was like- Okay, so this is very common, very, very common. Due to that unstable sense of self or lack of sense of self, it is very common for somebody with border per, uh, borderline personality disorder to, for example, hang out with certain people, right? and adopt that identity. These are, these, or this is sometimes thought of as being like a social chameleon, right? I don't know who I am, so I will adopt this identity. And that helps keep that sense of self stable. So when she says, I was watching a lot of videos about dissociative identity disorder, it is easier for somebody with BPD to start identifying with that and then get that kind of stable sense of self like, oh, I am one of these people. This is my group. This is where I belong, right? I would argue, this is just my opinion, I would argue that this is something similar that happened when she came out as trans, all right? It was an identity that she could latch on to. Sometimes, and it's, like I said, it's like I can't just sit down now and be like, all right, guys, come to the center, you know? Um, I think that is just more evident by just looking at my different videos. Um, and so many people will joke in the comments like, what Trish are we getting today? In actuality, who are getting different personalities inside of Trish? Right there, she's talking about how some people are like, which identity is in this video? Which identity is in this video, okay? This is two of those symptoms that you're seeing come to fruition of borderline personality disorder. An unstable sense of self and emotional regulation issues, all right? When these two things are happening, or one of these two things is happening, you don't know what the person's going to behave like, all right? Like working at the treatment center, working with people who have borderline personality disorder, you did not know how they were going to be from day to day. A good example of this is if you watch her relationship with Jason Nash and all of the vlogs that they did, it, you could see how Jason struggled in that relationship because he didn't know, all right? Like one of the most famous clips was this one. You'll, 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 if, if you're in a good mood, you're gonna love it. <laughs> Isn't that the fun part though about dating someone with like borderline personality? Like you don't know what mood they're gonna be in. Are they gonna be happy? Are they gonna be mad? You're always in a good mood unless I piss you off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to her video. Like I watched it and I was like, oh, like she seems crazy, but I know that's like what I sound like now, which is actually like really, really scary. But I'm just trying to explain Again, this is pretty much self-diagnosed, but it's something that I definitely, I definitely have distinct names for all my personalities. Listen to the words coming out of my mouth. 
don't self-diagnose, okay? As much as I make videos on mental health, mental uh, illnesses, different symptoms and everything like that, that is not to self-diagnose, that is the worst thing that you could ever do, all right? It's like trying to self-diagnose a physical illness. The problem is, is that there are specific treatments for specific mental illnesses, okay? And if you self-diagnose, you might be wasting time on something that isn't gonna work for you, and this can then lead to an idea that no form of therapy can help you, all right? There are a million different reasons why you don't self-diagnose, but in this instance, one of the main reasons is that you piss off an entire community, all right? Much like she did with the trans thing. And real quick, one of the, one of the things that I feel makes people so frustrated is that when Trisha Paytas does these things, they're unfalsifiable. What does that mean? You cannot disprove what she is saying, okay? There is no scientific test that you can do on Trisha Paytas to prove that she does not identify as a man. There is no scientific test that you can do to prove that she does not have dissociative identity disorder, okay? And this is one of the main reasons for the stigma around mental health and why we all need to act right is because people will often say, oh, you're faking it. You're faking it, right? And when we're doing these antics and these, uh, these, these actions that can kind of exploit mental health issues, all it does is feed that stigma. Okay, but like I said, I believe so many people get frustrated because there's no way to disprove what she's saying. If you remember back when the whole trans thing was going on, she would get on camera and cry and say like, you can't tell me how I feel. You can't tell me what I think. And while that's very true, it upsets a lot of people because there's this, this dissonance where you know like, yeah, I can't tell you what you think or feel or what's going on in your mind. But on the other hand, I know that you're full of crap. You know what I mean? Some people call it bipolar, <laughs> borderline, but it's really, to me, just multiple personality disorder, I guess. Yeah, she acknowledges the diagnosis that she had from a mental health professional. She talks about how she has borderline personality disorder, but to her is dissociative identity disorder. That is not how it works. Imagine going to a hospital and getting diagnosed with, I don't know, I don't know, some kind of, some kind of physical illness, like maybe a flu, and you're like, no, it's cancer. They say it's a flu, I think it's cancer. Like you can't do that, you can't do that. Now, if she went through the necessary steps and got a proper diagnosis, cool. But until then, it's pissing off a lot of people. And it's just that like love thing is like the hardest is to find someone to love through the disassociation, love through the switches. So this last clip, she talks about wanting to be in a relationship and be with somebody who can handle her through her switches. And if you watch Anthony Padilla's video, that's something that comes up with each of the guests he had on there. Um, it can be difficult to find people who are going to be there with you through it, right? It's the exact same thing with borderline personality disorder, but again, here is my strict opinion on this. Anybody who's followed Trisha Paytas for any period of time has seen her go in and out of therapy, all right? Last year, I was super proud of her. She said she finally found a therapist that she really liked. It seemed like she was going to therapy quite often. Then that fell off, all right? But anyways, you need to treat the right illness. So if anybody out there is watching this, if anybody out there knows somebody with borderline personality disorder, the primary therapy used for borderline personality disorder is dialectical behavioral therapy, okay? So one of those symptoms, that unstable sense of self, dialectical behavioral therapy can help with that. It can also help with the other major issue, which is emotional regulation. Dialectical behavioral therapy is the best therapy for borderline personality disorder, but there are also other therapies that can help, like cognitive behavioral therapy. Again, I have worked with thousands of people with borderline personality disorder. The people who do those two types of therapy, primarily DBT, see the most success and the best results, all right? But anyways, I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm a glasses half full, kind of optimistic guy. I do, <laughs> I do hope that Trisha Paytas isn't purposely doing this to offend people. There is a narrative out there that when she's not getting views 
or when she wants to stir stuff up and get pushed into the limelight again, she finds a way to really tick off an entire community. And I am hoping that's not the case. I am hoping that this is her symptoms coming to light, but at the end of the day, our mental health is our responsibility, and if we're pissing people off, it is our job to go get help, go to therapy, seek treatment, whatever we have to do. People don't, people don't have to sit there and put up with our stuff, but if this is something that offends you, if you've been watching Trisha Paytas for years now and she is constantly offending you, hit the unsubscribe button, all right? <laughs> but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my books over at TheRewiredSoul.com and The Rewired Soul merch, like this shirt with my adorable cat Maya on it. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.